Hello, I'm Pastor Jeff from Restoration Ministries, where our purpose is to restore, refresh, and renew, to have God work and restore your lives, to renew your minds, to refresh your spirit, that God would work in mighty ways on your behalf. And so we're excited to come to you today uh, from Cherokee Dam. Uh, we're out here. There's a Bassmaster tournament going on. But I came out here to talk to you about facing your fears. And I chose this location because uh, a few years ago, Tracy and I went camping in the campground here by the dam. And we were just in a tent and we pitched our tent and there were some other folks beside of us. In the middle of the night, we heard all of these crazy noises and really this smell that was unlike any we'd ever smell before. It wasn't good. It was like a wild uh, type animal type smell. And uh, then in the middle of the night, we hear all of this noise and, and a tree actually uh, fell over. In the morning when we talked to the people who were next to us camping, uh, they believed, they had camped here before, that there was actually Bigfoot in the area. And they felt that the smell we smelled, that the noises we heard were the result of a Yeti walking around in the woods. And as we thought about that, I'm not the bravest guy. Uh, there was some fear in my heart about, man, what, what might have been going on uh, all around us, you know? But I believe in our message today is going to talk to us about facing our fears. And so we're in the Resurgent series, but before I get into that, I wanna give you an announcement. We're gonna actually uh, have our meeting in our home. The Resurgence Home Group series is gonna be in our home this week on Sunday night at 6.30. That's Sunday, 4, 3, 22 in our home at 1940 Old Walnut Lane. I'd encourage you to come and uh, uh, just to, uh, spend some time in fellowship. We'll be talking about this whole idea of facing uh, your fears. So in review, resurgence is to rise up, to have revival, we believe personal revival, uh, and revival from a place of little to no activity. We really felt like God had placed on our hearts that through this pandemic, a lot of things have been laid down. A lot of things have been in a low place and that we believe that the move of God is upon us and wants to re bring revival into us and resurgence uh, into our lives. We use the foundational scripture of Isaiah chapter 57, 14 and 15, paraphrasing saying that God lives to revive the spirit of the lowly and to uh, lift up the heart of the contrite. God wants us to experience revival. He's a relational God, and we've talked about this. And so he had given us eight different themes to talk about. We talked about waking up and being uh, in God's presence. We talked about humbling ourselves before the Lord, studying and seeking, seeking him as if we were hungering and thirsting for him. We talked about praying and listening. Last week, we talked about hope and faith. And that brings us to this week where we're talking about facing our fears. Reflect, reflecting on last week, hope and faith, I wanted to just share with you and remind you that hope is the desire for something to happen and faith is the assurance that it will. If we have our hope and faith in God, in his son Jesus, in the guiding and leading of the Holy Spirit, we can be assured that those things are going to come to pass. If we're just hoping and believing and having faith in things outside of that, that's a whole different arena. But I believe that God wants us to be hopeful, to have something that we're anticipating, uh, and then have the faith to believe that God can bring it to pass. What are you believing for today? What are you having hope for? What are you having your faith extended towards? Hopefully it's something good that God will use in your life. And then next, we had this that we talked about. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And revival will only come when our faith faith is being exercised and is pleasing unto him. If we want revival, we need to believe that we can have it. We can have hope that it will come, but we can have faith, a blessed assurance that God is faithful to his promises. And just like in Isaiah, he says that he exists, that we might have and experience revival in our lives. I believe we can claim that for ours right now in this day, in this season. You know, we're talking about fear, facing our fears. 
Fear's goal is to squelch and to ultimately prevent revival or resurgence from happening in your lives. Fear will keep you preoccupied, preoccupied, and you'll respond to uh, fear when you have fear in your lives in one of two ways. One is called the flight. You will run from everything around you. You might run away from your calling. You might run away from the revival God wants in your life. You will run away from your purpose, your destiny. You'll run away from the move of God that he intends to, to have happen in your life. Fear can be a dangerous thing that can prevent us from walking the walk that God wants us to walk in this lifetime. Secondly, the second reaction, the first was flight. The next is fight, fighting. You will resist and fight against the changes that God wants to make in your lives. Sometimes for revival to happen, there might be a purging of something out of our lives that doesn't need to be there. There might be a time of testing that we need to go through because God's preparing us for a, a different journey, a better place, a stronger relationship with him. But if we resist that, if we become angry about that, if we have anxiety about that and let that overwhelm and consume us and we just push back against it, we'll never experience what God wants us to experience in our lives. Both of those responses to fear, fight and flight, will keep you from experiencing revival. Fear is the enemy of resurgence in our lives. It will work to keep you in bondage and keep you in a low place. Fear has no interest whatsoever in you rising up. Fear has no interest in you growing in Christ. It has no interest in you advancing the kingdom. It wants to keep you preoccupied, to keep you in the valley, keep you in darkness, keep you imprisoned in bondage. Fear out of control will destroy hope, thereby blocking faith. If you don't have hope in anything, you can't have faith to have assurance that it's going to come true. Fear will prevent you. It will block you from re and, re and will prevent revival from flowing into your life because you'll be so preoccupied with the fighting or running away from that thing which is called fear. Instead, what we are believing for is resurgence. What we are believing for is revival. God uh, sets us free. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. You know, God is good. Actually, we're going to read 14 and uh, 15 in Romans 8. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. That means Daddy, God. Did you see? I want to bring out a couple of things in here. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. That's what fear is trying to do, enslave you, uh, keep you imprisoned. What we need to do is say, you know what? I'm going to not walk in a place of fear where I'm going to be enslaved, but I'm going to acknowledge who I am. And that is, I am a child of God. If you've asked Jesus into your heart, if you receive him as your personal savior, then you indeed are a child of God. A joint heir, it says, with Christ. God loves you as his child, as his son, as his daughter. He doesn't want you to be tangled up with fear. He doesn't want you to live in bondage and enslaved and captivated by the, the, the hold and the stronghold that fear can put on your life. But instead, he wants to pour his spirit about, about, out upon you that you could experience life and experience that life more abundantly. So we are hoping for and we have faith in the fact that we will experience personal revival, that it is coming in our lives and we will rise up. We will not remain in a low place, but will be lifted up, not by our own strength and might, but by the hand of God Almighty. So are you ready to face your fears? This is our next step towards resurgence and revival. Let's turn to 2 Timothy. So just a few books back um, beyond uh, Romans, Paul is writing this as well. And we're going to read 6 and 7, 2 Timothy 
uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, says this, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the, for the spirit uh, God gave us does not make us timid. So in some version it said, For he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he gives us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline, or a sound mind. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. If we're living and our existence is based on a position of fear, then that is not in alignment with God's word. He hasn't given you that. He's given you a spirit to overcome. He's given you a spirit of power. He's given you a spirit of love. He's given you a spirit of a sound mind. Fear is trying to attack your thoughts and keep you preoccupied to be totally consumed with the consequences of things that you're fearing. When God, I believe, is calling us to rise up and realize he's given us power to overcome our fears, that he loves us so much that he's going to walk every step with us. And he's given us a sound mind to discern those things that we should be cautious of and those things that we can overcome by faith. God is good and his plans for us are good and his plans of revival need us to see and understand that we cannot walk by fear. So when we're talking about facing your fears, how can we do this? Sometimes it just seems overwhelming that all the things around us seem like they're they're crashing down and that there's things that are outside of our control. There's things that we don't know the solution or the answer. But here's the good news. We know the one who is the solution and is the answer. So here are three things that I believe we can use to face our fears. Number one, you can face your fears because you don't have to face them alone. You're not alone. Secondly, you can face your fears because the one who is with you is trustworthy. And thirdly, you can face your fears because you are in a position of one who is loved. Let's talk about those a little bit. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 41 and verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 41, 9 and 10. This is our first point. You're not alone. You can face your fears because you don't have to face them by yourself. You know, sometimes it looks like the situation is overwhelming. And if we try to bear the burden with our own strength and on our own, we may be defeated. But God says this, we are not alone. Let's see what the prophet Isaiah says in verse nine. It says, I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will withhold you with my righteous right hand. And skip to 13. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. I have chosen you, God says to you. I haven't rejected you. Don't fear. Why? Because I am with you. The creator of all heaven and earth is with you. When he sent Jesus to this earth, his name was Emmanuel, meaning God with us. When Jesus rose again and went to sit at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit, God with us, who can dwell within us in our Holy Spirit. If we accept Jesus as our Lord in our hearts. God is constantly with you. Whatever battle you face, whatever trial you find yourself in, whatever challenge is in front of you, God is with you in the storm. God is with you in the darkness. God is with you in the valley. And God is with you when you're fearful. And it's his purpose to help you with his mighty right hand and reach it down and pull you out of those places that cause fear in your life. How can we walk in a place where we face our fears? It's by acknowledging that we don't have to face them alone. We have a mighty God who is with us and he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He loves us. He is a good father and he will do what he has to do to bring us through whatever the situation is that's causing us fear. Number two, about facing our fears. You can face your fears because the one who is with you, God, who is with you, he is trustworthy. Let's turn to Psalms chapter 34 
and verse 4. We're going to read two passages of Psalms. David is, is the author here, and we want to see what he has to say. David says in Psalm 34, verse 4, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord. We talked about this, about the importance of seeking him. The Bible says when you seek him, you will find him. When you ask him a question, he will answer you. We have to be attentive to hear his voice. But if we seek the Lord like David did, we will find he will answer us. And then we will experience that he will deliver us from all of our fears. Now, why could David say that so confidently? There's tons of examples, but I want us to flip back a few pages in Psalm and go to Psalm 56. Psalm 56, and I want to read uh, 1 through 13 here. That's a, it's the whole psalm, but I want to give this as an example of how, why could David say with confidence that God would deliver him from his fears? Because he'd done it time and time again. What our point here is that God is trustworthy. Listen to what David writes. Be merciful to me, my God, for my enemies are in heart pot pursuit. All day long, they press their attack. My adversaries pursue me all day long in their pride. Many are attacking me. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, and I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? All day long, they twist my words. All their schemes are for my ruin. They conspire, they lurk, they watch my steps, hoping to take my life. Because of their wickedness, do not let them escape in your anger, God. Bring the nations down. Record my misery. List my tears in your scroll. Are they not on your record? Then my enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this, I will know that God is for me. In God, whose word I praise, in the Lord, whose word I praise, in God, I trust and am not afraid. What can man do to me? I am under vows to you, my God. I will present my thank offerings to you for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling and I may walk that I may walk before God in the light of life. God is trustworthy and David knew this. It's why David has uh, described a man after God's own heart. He trusted completely in God. Uh, I heard a little cute thing called the frog principle, fully rely on God, frog, fully rely on God. We can trust him. When we are fearful, we can know that we have a mighty God who can take our enemies and push them away. He can take sickness and disease and heal it. He can take financial ruin and put it to a place of, of supply and provision. He is a mighty God who is trustworthy. He's proven it throughout the all of creation and he's proving it and wants to prove it to you now. Don't fear. We can face our fears because we know that God is for us, not against us. He's working things out for our good. We can trust him. So when we're facing our fears, we need to understand God is with us. We're not alone. And secondly, he's with us. The one who is with us is trustworthy to bring us out from it. And the third point, you can face your fears because you are greatly loved by God. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to read uh, 16 through 18. It says this, And so we know and we rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Jesus Christ came to this earth and gave a love like no other. The Bible says greater love is, is, is there no, does anyone have than this, than one who would lay down their life for their friends. That's what Jesus did for you. He took on the burden of all of our sin, of your sin. 
That is the greatest kind of love, the sacrificial agape love it's described. It's unconditional love towards you. You know how you can face your fear? Because there is no fear when there is perfect love, but perfect love will drive out fear. When we acknowledge this great sacrifice that was given for us, the love that was extended to us by God the Father through the gift of his son, we can walk in a place without fear. It isn't that we won't have fearful situations, but we can know that we can overcome that fear because he hasn't given us the spirit of fear because he's with us, because he's trustworthy, and because he has such great love for us. There's nothing to be afraid of. The Bible says that, you know, why would you fear man? What can man do to me if a mighty God is the one who loves me? There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear because God is greater than whatever that thing is that you might be fearing. You can face your fear because you're not alone. You can face your fear because God is trustworthy and he is the one who is with you. And you can face your fear because his great love and compassion will overcome and cast out any fear that you have in your life. So in conclusion, as we're talking about facing our fears, fears are a real situation that exists, but their purpose is to destroy purpose and destiny. Their purpose is to put you in a place where you're defensive and you're maybe fighting against the move that God might have in your life. It puts you in a position where you're running away from calling and purpose, maybe running away even from God. Don't run away from those things that you fear. Don't try to fight them with your own strength, but lean into God and know that he is with you. Know that he is trustworthy. Know that he loves you and know that he has the power, might, strength to overcome whatever it is that you have fear of in your life. We need to submit it all to him, fully relying on God as we walk this walk. God's desire is that we fear him. We reverence him. And we fear the consequences of a life and an eternity without him. That should be what's fearful in our lives. But anything else we face, God is with us. God is for us. He's trustworthy and he loves us. And that, my friend, will take us through our journey of fear. That will set the stage because fear will prohibit us from, prohibit us from experiencing revival in our lives. When we put fear aside, understand that he did not give us that spirit of fear, but we understand that he is a loving God who's with us, trustworthy and loves us. Then we can overcome our fear and we open up uh, the doors and the gates of our heart to receive this resurgence that I believe God wants to pour out upon you and upon me in the form of personal revival that's fear uh, 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 free from any fear in our lives. So once you go this week, and take an inventory of the things that might be fearful in your lives. I would encourage you to get close to God, surrender those things to him. He's trustworthy, he's powerful, he's almighty. He can take that fear away from you and give you joy, give you peace and show great love unto you. And that is the preparation we need to do in our hearts and in our minds to be able to receive what God fully is planning through this move of resurgence that I believe is coming in our lives. So once you go this week and do what you can to surrender that fear to God and go and walk out this journey, preparing yourself for revival and be blessed.